When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers. Pizza. Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Requires new line. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Voices for Change 2.0, the only podcast that focuses on mental health while mixing in movies, music, books, sports, and pop culture. Here are your hosts, Rebecca and Joe Lombardo. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here at Voices for Change 2.0. We hope that you're having a good day. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being with us today on our humble little program. Uh, in the middle of June, can't believe that the year is uh, almost halfway over already. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I swear it seems like it was just Christmas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, really quick, <clears throat> one thing that we wanted to do, uh, because, you know, people have been having a tough time lately, uh, from celebrities such as Anthony Bourdain, uh, all the way down to, you know, friends of ours and people close to the show. Um, so we wanted to give out the National Suicide Prevention Hotline for uh, all you guys. Um, and if you're struggling, <clears throat> uh, call it. For sure. And, you know, um, I have a couple of other resources. And one of them I actually uh, take part in personally. Um, and I I can say that it's a great resource. But if you want, if you're in a, a dire emergency, where you just feel like completely hopeless, please reach out to the uh, Suicide Prevention Hotline. That number is 1-800-273-8255. There's another resource that people like to give out, and I like to give out. I actually trained with these folks for a little while, and it's for Crisis Text Line, and then you just text to 741 Seven four one, and someone will text back to you. Now, if you're not in a situation where you are feeling, you know, so desperate, if you just want someone to listen, we have uh, another resource which is called Seven Cups of Tea. That's you can that, that's I'm pretty sure it's Seven Cups of Tea dot com, but you can Google that. Uh, it's it's a great resource because you you don't, you don't have to tell them your name or any information you just go on in there and um, someone will chat with you and go over what your experiences are and uh, you know I think it it works out really well and like I said that's something that I'm a part of I'm a listener on there you know as, as someone who survived a suicide attempt I know how important all of this information is and perhaps if I had you know kept up with with you know, the the times, maybe I could have mm-hmm. contacted one of these resources and things wouldn't have been so horrible for me. And uh, <clears throat> the other thing, too, and I can't stress this enough, okay, um, when someone is in crisis, they don't necessarily feel up to reaching out to friends and loved ones. They feel that they're a burden on those people, and that's part of their rationale for um, attempting suicide. So reach out to those people, okay? <clears throat> if you've got a person in your life that you know struggles, that is uh, withdrawing, that that is is not engaging as much um you know use your intuition on this but reach out and and say to them hey are you okay i actually have a friend of mine that i plan on contacting this weekend that i haven't talked to in quite a while and the last time 
I had communication with him. He uh, he was doing okay, but he seems to kind of disappeared since then, and I'm I'm worried about him. And uh, I want to track him down and make sure that he's okay. Uh, and he's a childhood friend of mine. Um, so, you know, if you've got a feeling like that, you know, especially with any of your friends, especially with people that you haven't talked to in a while, um, just reach out. Sometimes that might be the difference between life and death. Absolutely. I know that that could have helped me a great deal during a very difficult time. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, and I and I tried to be there as much as possible for Beck, you know, but, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it, the more people, the better, you know, re- reaching out to, to all of us. We're all in this together, and, uh, you know, we have to look out for each other. For sure. So on that note, uh, we would like to tell you what you have in store for us, for you rather today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we have in store for us, I guess, is appropriate as well. <laughs> but again, we're all in this together. <laughs> so um, we're going to be talking with a gentleman from uh, across the pond that has uh, created uh, a website and uh, a book as well by a uh, taking letters from folks that are in recovery and being able to publish those so that people that are not in recovery can read them and, you know, get a little sense of hope. And I think that's very important. That's, that's why we're all out, out here doing what we do is, is to be able to offer a sense of hope to people. And uh, I just, I messaged him uh, several months ago. I just really thought that he would be great for the show because Mm -hmm. it's an, it's a new outlook on mental health awareness i think yeah and you know that's you know like we said last week one thing that we try and bring to light is different outlooks with mental illness you know not not everything works for everybody but having awareness of all the different resources and outlooks out there you know you you could come stumble across something that is awesome for you Mm -hmm. you know so we want to try and bring as much of that to light as possible. Absolutely. So on that note, <laughs> we will bring in our guest. Uh, good morning. Well, I guess it's evening for you, Mr. James <laughs> Whitey. Mr. James Whitey, how Hi are there. you? I'm good. Yeah, no, it's it's afternoon here. So, but good morning to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ha- have a happy afternoon there, sir. <laughs> Sorry, you had trouble getting in with the. Uh, Skype there. That's all right. That's okay. I've got, I've got there in the end. <laughs> Skype was playing up. <laughs> now we're we're happy to have you. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time uh, to be with us today. Not at all. My pleasure. No, no. I love your shows. No, it's my pleasure. Oh. Thank, oh, you thank you very much. So, uh, if you don't have any questions for us, we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Jump right in. Yep, I'm all ready. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, so uh, can you tell us where your mental health journey begins? Yeah, it's interesting. I think, you know, when I look back at my mental health, I, I, I can see it's been with me since since a child, really. But I guess, you know, I'm now in my mid-40s. But I think, you know, when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, you know, and certainly in the UK, you know, we didn't, mental health wasn't really talked about. It was talked about in hushed tones, and it was people other than us you know it was it was other people who you know we saw as you know mad and in inverted commas and and you know abnormal and in inverted commas and and I never thought of myself with somebody with mental health problems or mental illness and you know until I had a huge breakdown sort of about eight years ago I mean I had I'd suffered from depression and and eating disorders but strangely enough I'd never thought of myself as somebody with with a mental illness, I think because the, the stigma was was so much that I didn't want that identity. Um, mm. And then when I became, you know, incredibly unwell about, yeah, about yeah, eight, eight years ago or so, six years ago maybe, um, I things just collapsed. You know, I w- had a number of stresses. My, you know, my partner had um, been made redundant, and I had moved house, and I was moved to a new city, and you know, things were very difficult and. I think when depression hit me 
you know, finally it was uh, it was it hit me in the most extraordinary way. It was like being, you know, beaten about with a sledgehammer in my face and um, mm. the pain was so acute, you know, it was just mm-hmm. so, so extraordinary. Um, so I think that's, all, even, so even though, I was going to answer your question, even though I can see that it's been with me in my lifetime, it's only been sort of the last six years that I've kind of, I suppose, self-identified as having as having a mental illness, I guess. Do you seek treatment currently? I do. Yeah, I do. So I'm, I've been on sort of, I think probably most antidepressants, you know, um, I think in, in, uh, mm-hmm. in the last few years. So yeah, I, I take antidepressants. So I'm in the middle of going from one antidepressant to another and uh, the joy that that brings. Um, yeah, I, not much fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, not much fun at all. No, not much sleep. Um, I see a psychiatrist um, about every every few weeks, which is usually to check up on my uh, my medication and my, my my suicidal thoughts, which are quite strong with my with my particular type of depression. Um, mm-hmm. And I but I've tried, you know, I've tried so many things over the years, you know, and and as you know, some things work and and some things don't. So. I, you know, I exercise even though I hate it. You know, I, I, go, <laughs> I go to the gym and resent every single turn of the uh, stationary bike, but I, I do it and, and that helps a little. And, you know, I garden. I mean, I, I, yeah, I've had um, acres of, of counselling. So, yeah, I, I, I am with a sort of, um, I don't know what the equivalent would be in the US, but it's kind of, it's like community psychiatric team, uh, I suppose on the more mm-hmm. severe end of the scale. Um, and they kind of, you know, keep it, keep it going as, as best as possible, yeah. So you have like a, a sort of a doctor and a caseworker and a yeah type, is that the type of thing that you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So I have, um, so yeah, I have a, a psychiatrist uh, and he kind of, yes, who's kind of my, my you know, uh, care coordinator, we would call it here. So somebody that... Um, Kind of refer me to counselling when I need it, and um, and then sort of you know looks at my medication, and then we can you know tinker with my medication. So yeah, I have kind of ongoing support, and I've had that support since you know since about, yeah about six years ago. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. What about <clears throat> what about family or friends? Uh, were they supportive when you know you you finally sought mm. treatment? Yeah, they were. I think, you know, I think it's 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 that kind of um kind of coming out process really of so I you know, some were amazing and and incredibly supportive and um incredibly worried but incredibly supportive and mm. you know, have you know been alongside me I suppose in this process of, of recovery. Um and then, you know, there are people that have fallen by the wayside, you know, as as um, as it happens, you know, so people that I think found it hard to manage that I wasn't the James they thought I was, you know, mm-hmm. and weren't sure how to talk to somebody about mental health and mental illness. And, you know, I was in and out of psychiatric hospital and, you know, just found it hard to deal with and, and still find it hard to deal with. So it was a process of, you know, the most those crisis points, you know, in your life. And I think it's the same when you're mental health deteriorates so significantly that you you find out those who are able to stick by you and those that can't do it and mm-hmm. um and that's a, you know that's a, a huge process of loss you know as mm-hmm. well as all the other losses that are going on in your life so yeah I, you know i have a very supportive husband and a very supportive close family and and lots of supportive friends and some that have you know gone by the wayside and and partly through my choice of going well i know what i need around me are people that are not afraid to talk to me about depression mm-hmm. and that yeah. don't clam up and that you know will ask me you know about it and what it feels like and how I am and and because it's such a big part of my life and you know certainly when I'm acutely ill it's the only thing that I can think about you know I need people around me that aren't shy to ask about um you know suicidal thoughts or you know dark thoughts or how I'm feeling or medication or you know any of those things that help keep me alive so um I've had to be sort of choosy really about about who's around me and I and I think you know because depression as you know depression is telling us so you know 
clearly not to look after ourselves and that we're not worthy. We need around us a pool of cheerleaders, really, that are there, you know, saying the opposite of depression and, and are there to take to take care of us when we can't always do that for ourselves. Right. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's something, too, that, you know, we see, too, is, you know, there are... Mm. You know, people that you you lose through the the process of this. You know, and I and think that was what I, I the, something that I least expected out of my entire right. situation was that people would suddenly think, oh, you know, a lot of a lot of it was uh, due to the suicide attempt and being called, mm-hmm. you know, being called uh, selfish. So, yeah, selfish, a coward, coward. trying yeah. to get the easy way yeah. out of life and. Yeah, you know, yeah, and not kind of not really having understanding or compassion of what she was going through, you know. Absolutely. Um, and that's, you know, the the one thing that I that I've seen multiple times online, and I just I can relate to this so much, and I think it's mm-hmm. true for for anybody that that suffers from a mental illness is you're mm-hmm. going to be too much for some people. Those aren't your people. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I love absolutely. That. I think that's yeah. very. It's it it's it's so true that I I, I think, you know, if people aren't able to to be there, then yeah, then it's just not right. Because I think mm-hmm. part of the process of you know having relationships, any kind of relationships, friendships, is to try and go alongside with them where they are, you know, as long as you can, and and yeah. to try and be there, and you know, and if people can't do that, it's it's that huge. You know, I remember thinking oh I feel so selfish and actually someone said to me no this is the difference between self-care or thinking about yourself is not the same thing as being selfish Mm -hmm. and I thought no actually yeah you're right here I do need to be told that this isn't a selfish thing I'm not excluding others I just I need certain things just to stay alive really you know it was that it was was that important is self-care difficult for you? Meaning, do you get the feelings yeah. of, of sort of guilt and, you know, maybe I should mm. be doing something type stuff? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, those those tra- travel with me anyway. And then when, my, <laughs> when I have sort of acute, acute episodes, they are even stronger. So, you know, I, I, you know, I certainly try and think of those as the voices of depression and and it's this isn't easy to do at all i know but i i try and think of it as you know depression is telling me that i'm worth this depression is telling me that that you know i should be able to do more so i should be able to you know get a better paid job or you know do mm-hmm. better or you know more successful all those kind of berating poison things that, that depression tells you any any type of depression tells you and yeah, it's so, so, yeah. insidious it is it is absolutely insidious and and you're absolutely right and it's and it's when you're in it it's it's so hard to disentangle from the illness and and you because it it's an illness of the mind as you know so it's mm. it's i spend a lot of my time going you know almost mantra like repeating to myself this is depression talking this is depression talking this is depression talking um in an attempt to try and distinguish myself from the illness yeah, right. that's you know that's the the tough thing is, mm. you know, depression lies to you, you know, and absolutely, absolutely. You know, there's there's been tons of times where where Beck is having a day like that where you know she'll say, oh, I'm I'm worthless, I'm useless, I you know, all these different things, and you know, I'll try and talk her through it, and be like, well, no, you know, you got this going on, and you know. You, you need to take a day. You're, you're, this is a, one of your bad days, you know. But you know, and that's the important. Th- <coughs> excuse me. The important thing is having a person in your life that can help talk you through those moments where you are so low. You know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of lost my my that's steam okay, there. I, I lost my steam. So, James, what was the catalyst for your recovery? Uh, it looks like we just lost James. Yeah, we lost our our caller. Uh, hopefully, he will be able to call back in. I think we we might have to. Um, 
make some choices about uh, where folks are calling from, I think just for the way everything works for us. You know what I mean? It just it seems like we have a lot of difficulty with uh, the UK as far as Skype and yeah. I don't everything. know. I don't know what we can do to to fix it because we, you know, we've talked to a lot of pe- people over there that are great, and yeah. there's a lot of people over there that are great that we want to talk to. And, yeah, it's just so hard you know, and, because and uh, being able to get them. Okay. Are, are you there, James? I am. I'm sorry. I have no idea what happened there. <laughs> it's okay. We've That's been okay. through it before. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, that's good. Suddenly, it, it, you suddenly you disappeared. You know. Yeah. Um, are, are you familiar with Karen Unruh? I'm not. No, 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 I'm not. Oh, okay. She. Uh, you should look her up. She. She's over in the UK also. And we interviewed her last year, oh. and and yeah. the poor thing, we kept we kept losing her, and she must have called back in like <laughs> fifteen times. fifteen <laughs> times. Yeah, you know. And we'd be listening, and she'd be like, "Oh dear, I've lost them again." And we'd hear that, and be like, "No, Karen, come back!" <laughs> you know, and and Karen, if you're listening, we we love you and we miss you, and we hope you're okay. And but yeah, that's you know, it seems to be uh, a bit of an issue for us. Um, so yeah, if we if we lose again, call call back. <laughs> um, we're here. <laughs> uh oh. Did, did we lose you again? <clears throat> Shucks. Did you just say shucks? I said shucks. Wow. And I can't say anything else right now. <laughs> <laughs> anything that needs to be said. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, we we've we've lost James again. Um hopefully he'll call right back. Um I don't know what's going yeah, on. The Skype thing. I I don't know. I think we really need to look into uh some other format for doing this. I don't know. I don't know what that would be. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, let's see what Scott says. Scott's coming through. Oh, okay. Um, we're gonna take a break and play a song. Um, we're gonna be listening to "Start to Believe" by Blake McIver, and uh, hopefully, on the other side of that, we will have James back. So here you go. Stay tuned. Staring down that long and winding road, I felt like I could never start again. Flipping through the pages of my broken life, just remembering when before I was yours I just stumbled through my feeble lies but now you bring me all I could ask for you give me all that I need and baby you've gathered the pieces maybe I'll start to believe Up that mountain top, I said, How do we begin to climb? Wishing I could speed right through to all the joy, just manipulate time. But now I am yours, so I'll stop wandering through those feeble lies. Cause now you bring me all I could ask for. Doubts close in, I know that you'll be there. I won't despair, my dream come true. Who knew? Baby, it's you. And though I falter, I lose control. Your soul pulls me through. 
babe, it's you. You know just what to do. You bring me all I could ask for. Yeah. Give me all that I need. And baby, you gather the pieces. If I start, I guess I'll start. Whoa, whoa, I guess I'll start. I said I guess I'll start. I guess I'll start. I guess I'll start. I guess I'll start. I guess I'll start to believe. I guess I'll start to believe. Hey, welcome back to Voices for Change 2.0. We are having an interesting day here, <laughs> and uh, we hope that you're all still with us after some technical difficulties. We appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Welcome back. Uh, and if you're just tuning in, uh, we're talking with uh, Mr. James Withy. I'm saying that right. Am I, am I James? Yeah, it's Withy. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a difficult name. No, you're saying it perfectly. Oh, it's it's not as difficult as mine, so we're <laughs> we're gonna go with that. You know, you wouldn't believe the the uh, mashups that we get with a last name like Lombardo. I <laughs> really, so, yeah, it's it's rough, but uh, you know, after after forty four years, I think I've made my peace. Yeah. So that, that's it. That's it. What are you gonna do? This is it. Don't have much choice in the yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> not so, changing her name. Nope. So. Uh, <laughs> If you wouldn't mind, please tell us about the recovery letters. Uh, where did that yeah, idea come from? Yeah, so it, it, it came from when I was uh, I was in psychiatric hospital, and um, the, the sort of the few weeks before that, I had been asking my psychiatrist and the people, the sort of crisis team that were coming to visit me, and about where I could kind of get stories about recovery and about hope from depression and. And everybody was very reluctant to say, you know, there is a, you know, you can manage this, you can live a life alongside this, you know, some people do recover, you know, it, this is possible that it, it's going to get better, and and there was just nothing there, and and I, you know, psychiatrists would sort of give me recommendations for huge books of about 500 pages and yeah. on cognitive behavioral therapy and I'm kind of going well I, I can't read a page you know I can't read any of this my reading had just disappeared and so I was sat you know in a kind of not particularly nice room in a uh, in a psychiatric hospital where I live here in Brighton and and just thought actually I, if I'm going to recover you know and all that that means I need to hear other people's voices of, of recovery and of hope and and there just wasn't any so I sat there going okay so I wonder if you know it's not there maybe I need to do this um mm. so yeah the idea started really because what I wanted to help me which you know was to hear from other people about what they had done and how they survived was wasn't out there so I started by um going onto social media onto twitter and and I wrote a a letter um um, to other people from me first when I got home from hospital and then invited other people to write letters and I uh, it was a blog initially and then a website and now a book and and immediately I just got loads of letters in and 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 lots of amazing feedback um, and you know people wanted to write a letter about their own recovery they wanted to reach out to other people and the, the feedback that I was getting from people reading the letters was just extraordinary, you know, and I, you know, I still get emails um, from people saying, you know, these letters have saved my life, you know, just, just, just mm -hmm. amazing. And I think it's kind of because it, there, it's, it's one person reaching out for another and it, and it's from one person that has, you know, is managing their depression to somebody that's suffering now and, you know, and, pe and people, want that connection you know they want to know mm -hmm. from other people that have had those same feelings that they thought were only partic particular to them that they they are managing their lives and getting on with their lives and you know some people are now better and there's some people like me that that you know continue to live with it but 
we are living our lives. And yeah, it was just a very simple but very uh, powerful idea as it, as it came to be. And um, it mm. sort of hit um, and helped a lot of people, which is just wonderful. And, and they helped me, you know, it's, 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 yeah. um, you know, it sounds, it was the one thing that I wanted that, you know, when I was unwell and, and it's the resource that I use myself. So, you know, I flick through the letters on the website. I, I, you know, I have the book by me at bedtime and when depression wakes me up at four o'clock in the morning and thinking that, you know, life is horrendous and I can feel it hitting. I, I you know, I find a letter, some of the letters um, really hit home at different times for me and I flick through the book and I find letters that really resonate and help. Um, so yeah, it was a really simple idea at a time where I was at my most desperate, um, but that has caught on, which is, which is wonderful, you know? Yeah, it's, it's great. I was looking at the website last night and I think it's a wonderful resource, you know? Uh, and I like, this was one thing that really caught my eye that I thought was really special is that you've got letters in different languages. I thought, what, you know, that's brilliant, you know, just, yeah, you know, because you know, you've got people all over the world that that suffer. You know, not not just people that can read and write English. You know, so exactly. being able to have something on there in, in Spanish or what have you, you know, yeah, is absolutely. just, you know, that's. I think that was really well thought out uh, on on you know on your part and mm-hmm. you know just making sure to have that up there. You know, it's absolutely. and it shows the, yeah. the sense of unity. You know, it really does. Absolutely. You know, this, this, as you say, yeah, and it's something that I, you know, very much liking, want to expand in more languages, you know, and mm-hmm. yeah, and it, it is, you know, this is a worldwide epidemic. <laughs> this is a worldwide problem. And, and, you know, um, language shouldn't be a barrier to, to hearing about stories of hope, you know, it, exactly. it, it, it can't be, you know, um, so yeah, um, uh, <laughs> I've had some amazing people around the world that have, you know, translated letters for, you know, some of the letters for free on, or have written, written a letter in their own language. And, um, yeah, I don't want that to be a barrier. So that's something that I'm sort of trying to push more is to have as many letters in other, in other languages um, as possible. Yeah, I, I love that. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely great. Thank you. So how do you feel about the current situation as far as, stigma surrounding mental illness what are your thoughts uh do you know, it's better than it was but we weren't starting from a great place yeah, this um, is true so you know I, uh, certainly here in the uk things are changing um just through a huge amount of campaigning um the, you know the royal family here getting involved in mental health which you know has mm-hmm. uh, it's one of those things in this country that has a huge impact when they start to endorse things and talk about things it it, it helps mm-hmm. measurably um yeah. you know it, it's it's better than it was um we've a long way to go i mean i truly think there's a long way to go and i think mm-hmm. it's I, I, someone said to me recently kind of going oh well it's all kind of okay now and you know because we've done so much work and things are so much better and i was like you know actually if we lapse into complacency here that's that's the dangerous bit you know we have to keep really um really tight about you know challenging ourselves and our language and you know our own you know i come with huge prejudice myself you know and it's a process of having to challenge ourselves you know and also Mm -hmm. the stigma that you know is out there in society you know the thing that depression does is also it stigmatizes myself, if that makes sense. So, you know, um, the biggest stigma, my biggest stigma comes from depression itself Um, because it it taunts me and it tells me I'm not worthy and, you know, and I have to challenge that first and then help to challenge all the rest of the stigma. And I think one of the most powerful things to do is to is to come out about it, is to talk about it. And I know when I, I go around and do a lot of talks and public speaking and various things, and, you know, when I start to open up and say, you know, I live with depression and I've been in psychiatric hospital, I've, um, you know, I've had suicide attempts, suddenly, you know, that is such a powerful thing to do. And other mm-hmm. people go, oh, well, actually, me too. And my brother yeah. and my sister and my stepfather 
and we realize that you know we are all connected in this way and that's if you can if people are able to do that it's one of the most powerful things to do and because you know people then see us as human beings and you know with an illness and but they also see all the other bits of us as well they see our sense of humor and our personality and you know our kindness and all those things and not not just our illness but it does it does just break down barriers you know um and mm-hmm. certainly when there's a huge barrier of not talking and so i'm always you know really keen when i sometimes when i talk i'll think oh you know maybe i shouldn't mention my suicide attempts because you know maybe i shouldn't mention my psychiatric you know stays and it's like well no actually that's that's the stigma <laughs> you know yeah that's the exact mm-hmm. stuff that we have to be talking about um and when we do talk about it it just helps immeasurably um and i think we've got i think we've got a long way to go in lots of different aspects of mental health but certainly with stigma um there's you know there's many more things to do but it's better than it was so i am pleased that we're moving in a direction that's positive um but i'm afraid of complacency really i suppose is is, is a way of summing it up yeah, yeah i would have to agree with you there yeah, that's definitely a concern is the complacency of it. You know, I think that, you know, uh, everybody having the conversation is a huge step, but it's a first step. You know, there uh-huh. needs to be uh-huh. more done. You know, um, you mentioned the royal family talking about it now, and I, I think that's uh-huh. awesome because, you know, they don't only have an impact in the U.K. They have an impact on us as well, too. I mean, right. they're, okay. Okay. you know, I mean, you, you it's you know we're 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 not a colony anymore, but um, but we but we still very much pay attention to what they say and do. I mean, shoot the the royal wedding recently yeah, was huge funny. over here, and okay, uh, okay. you know, it, and, and it, I'm sorry, honey, but it, the funny thing is, is that we've very recently gotten into learning about the royal family. Uh-huh. We, you know, we learned about the abdication and, you know, the whole, sure. the whole history and, oh, uh, yeah. and got up to where, you know, the younger royals are now talking about mental health and uh-huh. mental health stigma and uh-huh. everything. And uh-huh. we just, we just really have a great deal of respect yeah. for them. Absolutely. After yeah, everything that we've seen. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, I think having, these voices out there talking about it and shedding light and showing uh-huh. that it can happen to anybody and everybody that really does yeah. tie us together and it humanizes the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, the, the next step is, is really, you know, you see other diseases and they've got their lobbyists, they've got their people uh-huh. fighting for, for rights yeah within the government, you know, and yeah. cancer and, and whatnot. And, you know, that is one of our next steps, I think, is to have a voice there to make sure that our rights are covered as well and our, Absolutely. you know, we're getting what we need as well. You know, um, that's a, I think that's a huge next step too, you know. Um, yeah, I th- I, th- I think that's, I think that's absolutely true. I think it's absolutely true. I so certainly in the UK, you know, we're still struggling with, you know, our, so we kind of, as you know, we kind of have a national health, a free national health service, but mm-hmm. the, the, you know, the health service here, the terms of parity of the amount of money spent on physical health and mental health is, is, is so different. And um, certainly, I, I, I think certainly we're going to look back at this time, you know, you know, years ahead, and it's going to seem medieval in terms of yeah. you know, what we knew about mental health and the kind of treatments. And I was speaking to my psychiatrist recently and saying, you know, I was having a particularly bad time. And I was saying, look, you know, what I want to do is just to go away just for a few days. I don't want to be in a scary psychiatric hospital. I just want to be able to go away, you know, somewhere residential for a few days just to get my head together and be looked after. And and he was saying, yeah, we know that. We know that that's what everybody needs and there is no money to do it. So Mm -hmm. we're very much in a position of, you know, the services just aren't there. You know, they know that more money is needed, um, but we are not meeting the needs of people with mental health issues. It's just, it just doesn't happen. And it's a very strange feeling, you know, when you're kind of stuck 
with um, knowing that you need something and it's just not there. So and I, I think there's a lot of work to do with that. I mean, I'm not sure what it's like in the U.S., um, but certainly it's worse. here. Yeah, it's worse. It's worse, <laughs> really. It's worse, really, yeah, is it? it's, it's bad. Because if you, you don't know, have insurance. And... Right, you know, that, and that's the, the, the real criminal thing of it to me is, mm. you know, health care shouldn't be uh, a way to get rich. You know, it, it really shouldn't. You know, and, and that's how it's treated here between the pharmaceutical companies and whatnot. Uh-huh. And, you know, they're, it's just bad. You know, I could go on a whole rant about it myself and <laughs> we don't have the time. And, and I would drive sure. the wife nuts if I did that. You know, she, she hates it when I go off on a rant like that. But um, so I'm going to I'm going to segue into a question. <laughs> sure. um, yeah. So what would you say to someone that doesn't believe in recovery from depression? Oh, uh, you mean in terms of the fact that you can't recover? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I certainly I use uh, certainly my I, can, I guess I would talk about my definition of the word, you know, and my, mm. and my definition of the word is very much about, um, you know, not everybody can recover you know but you know if you can add meaning into your life whilst you're living with depression that's you know that's recovery if you can you know um hold down you know any kind of job or relationship or you know any kind of even day-to-day existence you know that is recovery um i i think you know i've had a real mixed bag of you know experiences in terms of um what people think about this and you know i know some people that um would we call themselves recovered you know and because they're not on any medication and and they don't have those kind of grave thoughts but they are few and far between and and i don't i don't think that's what's important you know i think what's important is that when we live alongside these kind of illnesses you know Mm-hmm. Um, saying that we're in recovery is is just a part of living, you know. It's a part of going, and a part of acceptance. And I think um, for me, I may be going off on a tangent here slightly, but um, for me, acceptance in terms of my recovery has been the most one of the most useful things. Is I, I spent years going, I shall fully recover from this, and I shall do it perfectly, and it will go completely. And you know, working really hard to go, I don't want this in my life, and I want it to go, and um, I don't want to be somebody who has depression. And and for me, what happened was that, you know, I came to the conclusion that, you know, and as did my psychiatrist doing it together, we were going like, well, actually, this isn't going to go. This is a chronic illness. Um, mm-hmm. And I and I learned to live with it, you know, and I hate it, you know. Right. I really hate it. Um, but actually accepting that... Um, I am not going to be, probably, you know, in my lifetime, it's not going to be something that completely goes, was probably the hardest bit of my recovery journey, but it was one that released a lot of stuff. So it released a kind of sense of perfectionism to get better. And so, I, I you know, it depends on how you're defining recovery. But, but for me, I will, you know, whatever state I'm in, if I've got through the day, you know, um, then I, I think I'm in recovery because um, depression is trying to take me down. You know, it's trying really right. hard to take me down. Um, and, you know, if it's taken me, which it has done in the past, you know, a whole day to, you know, put a plant into my garden, you know, then that's recovery, you know. And if I've got to work with, you know, depression shouting at me that I'm worthless and don't go to work and stay in bed, then, you know, that's recovery. And those those small yeah. achievements are are not small they're just enormous and mm-hmm. yeah. um so you know it, it is a definition thing here but i'm i guess i'm really keen to say to people look those those things that you know everybody else takes for granted when we when we do this with you know any kind of mental illness it's such a huge thing to do um you know having a bath you know i spent i spent months you know not eating and not washing properly and not looking after myself and when i do those tiny things especially when i'm very ill i you know i really try and say to myself this is a big deal you know this is a really big deal and mm-hmm. um you know and that's what recovery is you know is about living and and doing those things and and trying to find some meaning and and you know and maybe also 
you know, building in some amazing times into your life, you know, and, and trying to enjoy them. And um, it's a whole mixture of stuff. So I, it, it's tricky. That I'm, I'm aware that I, I don't tend to say to people, you know, when you have recovered. Um, right. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, you know, as you know, this is this is this is a journey, and and journeys are there are good bits and there are bad bits and there are blue and awful bits and um, <laughs> there are bits where it's better and you know, <laughs> I'm trying not to swear here. Um, <laughs> and it's appreciated, you know, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, and it's it's, but I think if we can share those journeys, you know, if we can share what it's like, then. It, you know, mental illness is, is you feel so alone. Um, mm-hmm. But actually, if we can share those experiences of uh, our journey of recovery and what it's like in the bad times and the good times, then actually it means that we're walking with each other. Um, right. And that's and that's really important. Can I don't know whether I've answered <clears throat> your question at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have. You know, you, you, you have. And that's, you know, it's uh, outlook is a, a big part of it, you know, is. And it's like you mentioned, you know, trying to, to do those tasks, even when, you know, it's a, it's might be something mundane for someone who's not afflicted, but for someone who is, you know, getting up and taking a shower, it can be a, a huge deal. And Absolutely. being able to acknowledge that uh, is, <clears throat> you know, that's huge, you know, and, so I, I completely understand where you're coming from with your with your outlook of recovery, and you know I, I like that. I respect that. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. So yep. tell us about uh, the next book that you have coming out. Yeah. So um, we are kind of hoping to do a kind of series of books, really. Um, so our next book is about is about loneliness, which. Uh, as we know, is so kind of kind of linked with mental health. Um, so what we found was that um, the, the power of these letters of writing from one person managing to one person suffering was so powerful that we kind of wanted to expand the idea, really. Um, and the, the book has, you know, has had a lot of success, which is wonderful, which I'm just overjoyed about. And and really, my publishers were really keen to say, actually, let's let's push this idea because it's been so successful and. So yeah, so we're now sort of in the process of um, getting submissions of letters from you know all over the world, and you know, and your listeners can 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 write to me and and send them a letter for you know our next book. So it's a case of um, people who've experienced any kind of loneliness in our lives, and and you know that's pretty much all of us. You know, um, right. are writing to people that are you know feeling alone now and trying to alleviate some of those awful feelings of aloneness and loneliness that, that are suffering and certainly the agenda in loneliness in the UK here is, 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 is increasing massively and there's been a lot of reports and links about how, it, how much it shortens your life and you know the damage it does to your health and um, yeah we kind of are really keen so I work with a, um, a professor of uh, psychology in Edinburgh and, and I do my books with her and um, She's been doing a lot of research in, into loneliness, and yeah, we love the links with mental health, and um, yeah, we're just kind of keen to push that idea, that, you know, the same idea of letters and reaching out to people and saying, you know, this, you know, it won't always feel this bad, you know, and <laughs> that concept, um, same with depression, and that, that nothing is going to change, and when you're in that well of loneliness, it feels like that's how your life is going to be, and it's not going to get better. So we right. wanted to apply those same ideas. Very cool. Oh, absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, it's 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 definitely again it's insidious this feeling of loneliness and mm-hmm. it does go hand in hand with you know depression. Yeah, you know, I, I know on <clears throat> on days that I've I've had down days uh, uh-huh. and uh, you know even when I'm you know especially when I'm at work you know and I'm and I deal with the public at at large day in and day out uh-huh. and. Uh-huh you know, to feel disconnected, you know, and all I want to do is, is stay at home and be with Beck and, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll call her and say, Hey, I'm, I'm having a bad day. You know, I just need to hear your voice, mm-hmm. you know, sure. and that's, and that's my lifeline, you know, yeah, um, absolutely. you know, and she, do, and she goes through the same thing, you know, and, and, you know, she, Hey, I just need to hear your voice and, you know, take a few minutes yeah. to talk and, 
you know, being ha- being able to have that that feeling of connectedness, you know. And so the fact that, so the fact that you're putting out something that you're working on something about loneliness, you know, hopefully you know, the the readers of that book will you know, find a, a connectedness to to the people that have provided material for the book and yeah. You know what I mean? Um, just I, I, I again, you. it's 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 like altruistic to me. You know, I think it's it's awesome. You know that that you guys are working on it, and you know we're excited for when the book gets done, and you know when it's out, we we'd love to have you back so you can you know definitely promote it too. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's you know it's that. I, I think feeling so disconnected either through you know depression or through loneliness you know it's 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 uh, that I think that feeling is is quite similar to each other actually when you know the loneliness of depression and the loneliness of of not having connections and people around you and you know we're inbuilt to be such you know social creatures that you know when that's not not there for people then you know again it can feel like being poisoned you know um exactly. and that there isn't any hope and so yeah we're just really hoping that you know we can supply the message of hope to to loneliness as as you know as well as depression and um so yeah we're getting letters at the moment there's still details on the website and um yeah we're hoping that it's you know again it's gonna it's gonna help a lot of people just by saying look you know, we've been there as well and um this is not just an experience that you're having, you know, it's an experience that our millions of people around the world are having um, right. and hoping that those messages and those stories um, can help people. Yeah. Indeed. So tell us uh, how people can reach out to you on social media if they have questions or want to make a submission. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, the website is um, www.therecoveryletters.com. And all the details, so people can submit a letter to go on the website. So, so um, we put letters on the website all the time, and we have about, you know, uh, 70 or so that we rotate. So people can submit a letter uh, uh, about their depression and um, a recovery letter of depression for for the website. And there's details on there if they want to submit uh, a letter about loneliness for the book. All the details are there as well. Um, Twitter, it's um, at recovery letters um so people can message me on there and my email address is on the website or they can direct message me um so yeah you know it's it's always it's always amazing to hear from people on social media and i and i think you know there are lots of faults with social media but but certainly you know in terms of uh you know spreading the message about about hope and about recovery and, and about uh, what it's like to have depression social media has been an amazing vehicle so yeah it's always wonderful to to hear from people. Indeed, indeed, yeah. You know, we've seen we've seen a lot of relationships get destroyed by social media, of course. But you know, the yeah. community, especially on Twitter, is unbelievable mm-hmm. and completely supportive. And Absolutely. you know, it's unstoppable. You know, so it's yep, great. There's a lot Absolutely. of us out there. Yeah, there's um, a lot of us out there. There is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and James, where where can people get the the book, uh, recover the recovery letters book? The first one. Yeah, the first one. So, the first one. Yeah. So you can go. So it's 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 available all over the world, basically. Um, so you can you can go onto Am- in the US. You can go onto Amazon, um, um, Barnes and Noble uh, have it as well. Um, so yeah, either of those I know are, are definitely selling it. Um, cool. So yeah, my publishers, Jessica Kingsley, are, are release books in in the US. So yeah, they can get it. They can get it online. I don't know about how available it is in in bookshops. I'm not sure, um, uh, but certainly you can you can get it through the internet. Um, but yeah, it's available um, on Amazon throughout the world, basically. Um, but yeah, cool. I know definitely Barnes, Barnes and Noble are selling it. So yeah. Um, absolutely, it's um, it's out there, which is which is wonderful. And you know, if people had read read the book and then want to submit a letter uh, to the website, do oh, you know what I love is that you know people that I that read the letters online uh, initially then submitted the letter for the book and you know their own letters reaching out to people. And so it's it's a lovely process of you know people gain something from the letters and they write a letter themselves and it's sort of this 
sort of peer circle of support and and hope, which is wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And needed. Yeah, and needed. <laughs> so, um, it looks like we our time is uh, done for yeah. Today. Yeah, Thank and it's you. unfortunate because we, we've we've so enjoyed talking to you, James. Uh, I'd love to really too. Have. Thank you so much. It's you know, been great. We, we thank it. you for thank you for everything that you guys do because it's uh, it's so important, and your podcast is fantastic. And you know, mm, uh, you. I, you know, I love listening to it. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and you know, again, like I said, we'd love to have you back anytime. Um, especially okay. once the second book is, is done, you know, we, we want to promote That's the hell right. out of it. And, uh, <laughs> just give me a shout, you know, where to find me. <laughs> absolutely. I will. Absolutely. I will. Uh, stay, stay on the line. Uh, we are, ex- we are exiting here uh-huh. with, uh, Damien Escobar with a song called fire to the rain. We'll catch you guys next week. Yep. Don't miss the Mental Health Memoir of the Year, It's Not Your Journey. It's Not Your Journey is the true story of one woman's 20-year battle with mental illness and her recovery from a suicide attempt in 2013. Rebecca Lombardo candidly reveals her real and raw emotions in dealing with depression, bipolar disorder, the loss of her mother and brother, and more. 
Pick it up today on Amazon.com or visit www.RebeccaLombardo.com for more information. Join us next week as Rebecca and Joe continue to battle the stigma of mental illness. Follow us on Twitter at Voices for Change RJ and on Facebook at Voices for Change 2.0.